Canonical. So thank you, Canonical, for buying our dinner tonight. Um, next week actually is the OpenStack Design Summit. I'm not sure how many people are actually going to be headed out to San Diego, but a number of us will be. Okay, very good. So if you're out there, definitely come by and you know support the Austin contingency that'll be out there. Like, uh, steps back. oh, sorry. I'm sorry so um, for the audience. Okay, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's on camera. So um, I'm going to ask a meet from Canonical to come up. We got a few minutes to chat, and then we'll get right into the agenda. Okay. Well, well it. thank you. Thanks for letting us uh, sponsor this event. We've done this a couple times now, um, so I'm pretty familiar. I'm not going to hear pitch a product or anything. I do think, though, that as they mentioned, the the summit's going to happen soon, and we have a number of speakers from Canonical who are going to be there to talk about things. For Folsom, there is the Ubuntu Cloud Archive. So if you're using 12.04, uh, obviously um, Ubuntu 12.10 is not out yet. But if you change your repositories and point to the Ubuntu Cloud Archive, you can play around with Folsom. I'm sure many of you have already done that. If you have any questions or anything after this, please come and talk to me. If you have questions about projects, the Sputnik project, anything that we partner with Dell, sure. If you have questions about Crowbar and Ubuntu, let me know. I'd be happy to talk with you. Um, the other thing is that we are also going to be sponsoring the event on no in November, but that's going to be after the summit as well as the Ubuntu Developer Summit. So two kind of major things where announcements are going to happen regarding both Ubuntu and OpenStack. And so actually, we'll be back here again. So that's, that's actually not exactly right. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, this might have been because I've been there. So it's so actually next month, then after we're actually sponsoring the event. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that's on November 8th. Uh, but I think Michael's trying to get a slot to actually talk about some stuff. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll still someone someone will be here talking sure. to you guys, sure. and we'll, uh, we'll be a little forward. and uh, we'll just uh, again we'll be in the back whether you want to talk with us, chat with us, whatever. Uh, so absolutely, let us know. But again, I'm here to answer any questions you guys have about Cloud Archive, how to do it, how to update, whatever. Um, and I don't want to steal any thunder from the from the keynotes that are going to happen at the summit. So I'm going to be a little cagey today. Because I just don't want to get in trouble, um, especially from uh, we have a, a cosmonaut leader who uh, who doesn't like me sharing stuff without his permission. So in any case, thank you. Please go ahead, um, and I guess Rob, if you want to kick it off. Yep. Sorry, uh, and I just tweeted the um, stream. If somebody could check the hashtag and then. Um, just make sure that the tweets right. Sometimes I can't tell if the webcam is inverted or not. And were you thinking that we would do um, the summit stuff first, or we would talk? Yeah, about I guess. How much time do you need for your report? Why don't we do that first, and then we can be unbound on the time? Because I, I, that could run over, or we could get it done real fast. But so um, Miguel contacted us. Um, the earlier, a uh, little while earlier, asking, uh, he had a presentation about enterprise. I'll let you introduce it uh, a little bit more. But my point with this is that we really do want inbound requests to demonstrate uh, OpenStack technologies and technologies related to OpenStack. So um, you know, it's really important for us as a user community to show how we can use OpenStack, develop OpenStack, extend OpenStack. Um, and so, consequently. That's how that's how we're looking for speakers. So if you're doing something interesting and you want to show the the guts of how it interacts with OpenStack, contact us. We'll get you up. Here. Yeah, yeah, this is exactly how Miguel's up here. Miguel actually volunteered to do a talk about something not affiliated with the sponsors of this at all in any way. Um, so uh, this is the kind of thing that we'd like to come up. So and that, if you have ideas, just shoot it to on the meetup site or to Rob or I. And that's and I'll say that one of our one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that we have the, the speakers be you know very open stack focused and so we're we're starting to we're trying to separate sponsorship from speaking slots. So power still going? It's going lights. It just it just okay. started up. And Miguel has said he will take any question. He knows the answers to everything. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> This is the first time I use this uh, laptop to do a presentation. So, there you go. bear with me. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> While he's getting set up, I, I created a um, Etherpad, an OpenStack Etherpad for the second session, the second part of this of tonight's stuff, where we talk about Grizzly and Folsom a little bit. If you're used to Etherpads, I'm about to tweet the URL for the Etherpad. Um, it's really helpful to have multiple people using the Etherpad and following along and, and getting things running and, and getting things going. So, <laughs> if you're not familiar with Etherpads and want to take a second to pop pop it up and, and see what it is, then you can it's it's basically a shared editing space. Go. Um, well, what question do you need to interrupt? You. Uh, this will be TechRanch guest. Yeah. So, Matt, so do you have to show the I don't think the guest requires a password. I don't think the guest requires a password. So go to that little thing that you're trying to get. Yeah. Okay. Can you go to see this place? Thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't get that right. <laughs> Take away my credibility. <laughs> okay, very good. So uh, my name is Miguel Miguel Laval. I um, I was uh, until recently employed with HP. I left uh, HP on August thirty first. I decided to take a voluntary early retirement uh, after 26 years with uh, digital equipment, Compaq, and HP. And uh, I was with HP Software, and I decided to leave and concentrate the next phase of my career with uh, <coughs> um, around OpenStack. So today I'm not really uh, trying to sell anything. I'm not promoting anything. I'm just uh, sharing what I've been uh, learning around uh, OpenStack since uh, September 1st. And that's, uh, that's when I officially started my, uh, my retirement from HP. Um, what I've been doing uh, since I left, well, I've been, I've been learning my way through the, the Nova and the, the quantum uh, source code. My plan is to start contributing uh, code to, to those, those two projects. I've uh, installed a five-node uh, uh, OpenStack sandbox with uh, one of my former delivery partners in Mexico City. He's been kind enough to let me play with uh, some hardware out there. So that's what I've been, I've been learning uh, about uh, uh, installing and setting up OpenStack. And I've been uh, uh, testing uh, some monitoring to HP software tools to uh, monitor performance of uh, OpenStack. So what I'm going to uh, show today to you is really a <coughs> little pro pro prototype that, that uh, uh, I put together uh, to monitor OpenStack and op instances are running in OpenStack with uh, some of the HP tools. Uh, assumptions behind this uh, little, little uh, experiment is that, that uh, in order to help the enterprise adopt uh, OpenStack, we need to uh, take into consideration the fact that there's a pre-existing environment, there's a pre-existing infrastructure, and in many cases that uh, infrastructure or pre-existing uh, uh, status quo is a set of uh, management tools. And in some cases, those management tools are HP software. 
those uh, CIOs, they have invested a lot of money in those uh, tool sets, and they are not going to just uh, get rid of those investments when, um, when um, they uh, deploy OpenStack. So if we help them to integrate whatever they have uh, already in place, we are going to help uh, OpenStack to be adopted in, in, the, in the enterprise. So Can that's- an example of a, of a management tool that might benefit from OpenStack? Uh, why don't you let me go uh, uh, through the presentation and maybe I'll be able to answer that, okay? Does that make sense? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the overall concept is to provide a unified monitoring uh, uh, monitoring for OpenStack at two levels. Number one, the infrastructure underlying uh, OpenStack itself. And number two, the virtual resources created uh, in an OpenStack uh, platform. So what, what we are going to see is that, that uh, we are going to be able to monitor both levels. Uh, specifically, uh, for this uh, li little test, I'm using I'm using a, an HP software tool called SiteScope. SiteScope is an is an, is an agentless uh, monitoring tool that uh, is able to monitor servers, routers, uh, all the all the elements in, in the network. Uh, it's agentless in the sense that the way it gathers uh, 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 performance. Uh, Data is uh, doing uh, logging the systems using, in many cases, uh, uh, SSH, SSH, okay? And uh, once uh, you are able to start getting performance information from, from the infrastructure and from the, from the instances through site scope, then you are able to connect and, and, and um, spread all that information through the whole uh, tool set that in this case HP, or it might be a different uh, uh, <coughs> performance tool vendor might uh, uh, suit. <coughs> so as I said, one of the, one of the uh, purposes, purposes of my presentation was really to share with you what I've been learning. And in this case, uh, one of the things I, I, I had to play with was the, the, the OpenStack API in order to be able to create instances and then um, provision the, the monitoring for, the, for those instances. Uh, for, uh, I don't know how many of you are already familiar with the, the OpenStack API, but for those of you who are new to this, the, the API is a uh, REST-based API it exposes the different services, Novak, Lance, Keystone. They expose a uh, REST API that uh, you can use to uh, request services from, from, from OpenStack. Uh, the, the OpenStack Compute API uh, supports uh, requests uh, both using uh, JSON and XML. And um, this is basically how, how you interact with the with, with uh, OpenStack. This is a uh, little flow of uh, a request to, to the API, uh, which is in, in one of the, the manuals of uh, uh, Keystone. And essentially here you have a user who wants to create uh, a, a server in, 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 in Nova Compute. So essentially what uh, that user will do is to first uh, uh, request uh, from, from Keystone, which is a uh, identity service. Uh, it provides a, uh, uh, a token to, to access the, the OpenStack services. With that uh, uh, token, uh, the, the user gets a, a uh, description of the services that that uh, user and tenant has access to. And once uh, uh, the, the user selects the, the specific API endpoint that uh, the user wants to use, uses that, that endpoint to uh, contact the, the specific service, in this case, Nova, Nova Compute. And then Nova Compute uh, 
execute the, the request. <coughs> so this is a uh, typical request. Uh, yeah. We can see most of uh, this is a typical uh, JSON request for uh, to request the the, the uh, uh, access token to the to the uh, to the API, and essentially what uh, you provide them is a post, and this is uh, the URL and the URI, the URI that you use to to access the service. And essentially, you provide a, a tenant name, uh, a username, and a password. What uh, you get in response to that is a token, the, the, the access token to the, to the API, which looks like something like this. And uh, with uh, an expiration date and time. Ask a detailed question. Sure. Uh, that didn't look like SSL and the password was as fast as text. I'm sorry if that's too detailed, but we uh, at this point in time we are not using SSH. We are SSL. <coughs> it was not HTTP secure. The uh, HTTP header. Oh no no this no. You don't necessarily use HTTP HTTPS. If you're using DevStack, it's you're, it's not meant for that type of security. If you're if you're going to deploy it. Yes. Okay. You well, would. even if you're going to deploy, you don't usually use HTTPS. That's at the front end. You have a you have a, you have a proxy and you have a proxy that handles terminating the HTTPS for you. Right, but you're not you're not going to pass. You're not going to get your auth token using clear text in a production cloud. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a good question. <laughs> um. So once you get your token, one of the things that, that you get with that token is the different um, endpoints to access the, 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 the API. In this case, these are the uh, endpoints that the Nova uh, compute services is exposed. Okay, so you you select one of those, and essentially with one of those you can. <laughs> to, to create a this one. Okay. Questions so far? So let's see. So this is what uh, we put together. I'm I'm connected to the to the little uh, prototype test that, that we put together. And as you can see, we have a uh, controller, and we have uh, four complete nodes here. So I'm going to create a uh, instance. It's uh, being built right now, so let's uh, just give it a few seconds. So this UI, uh, this is something you wrote yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's too far away. What, what's going on right now? Essentially, what uh, I'm doing is uh, I created an instance, and it's, uh, it's being built. And it's it's it's, spawning. it's showing you that uh, that the instance is being uh, built on an instance of what? It's a uh, it's an Ubuntu server. So it's a virtual machine, a Ubuntu virtual machine. Yeah. Okay. So right now it's already active and running. So I should be able actually to open the console.
while it's connecting to the console, let's let's provision a monitor, a performance monitor for that instance. So I'm going to <laughs> add a performance monitor for, for that instance. It would say side, side scope uh, monitor. And I have to provide a, a username and a password because I'm, I'm using a, a site scope uses SSH to connect to that. Where is site scope running? Is it running on your local instance here, local machine here? It's uh, it's uh, running on the on the on the same controller on the same machine as the controller. And what does it do when it connects to that instance? It starts uh, periodically downloading performance uh, information from, from that instance, or, or from whatever service you tell, uh, or server or instance. Is it, you is it running an agent on that instance? No, it's agent. Okay. Can you, instead of a password, could you use a, a key or credentials for that? Yeah, we could. What were the other actions that you have besides attaching? Once, uh, once the monitor is attached and working, we will be able to monitor the performance. And I'm going to show you. This, uh, this is going to turn into a green uh, check mark when the monitor is ready. And, and at that point in time, we will be able to see CPU utilization, memory utilization. Yeah. Here it goes. So I'm going to change to the performance tab here. Well, first of all, you can see that uh, I have the controller on the uh, four compute nodes. I, I can actually uh, monitor the performance of uh, this. So that's uh, the CPU utilization and the memory utilization of the compute nodes. <coughs> <clears throat> and within that, that within that compute node, I have a my instance, and we can see the performance, memory uh, memory utilization, this disk space. Okay, and now uh, I'm taking a uh, sample sector every fifteen seconds. Of CPU utilization and monetization. Is it opening an SSH tunnel every 15 seconds or does it maintain same? It's, it's, it's open all the time. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a continuous search. I'm guessing you can only do this on Linux instances right now. Oh, we can do it on, on Windows as well. You can? Yes. Using, how do you get the SSH into Windows? Uh, we don't use SSH, we use. Um, Whatever, okay. whatever is used in Windows. It's cool. So, so site scope runs on Windows. Also. No, si this site, yep, yeah, site scope is able to monitor the performance on Windows. Uh, Siglin would let you do it, yeah. Oh, that's right. Or just grab a copy of Metasploit. That'll give you SSH access. <laughs> <laughs> yes, whether you want, whether they want it or not. <laughs> Our diagnostic tool is. So, so I have a question. So the, is this just using um, the site? The I thought the site scope was all right. So that's exactly that, that, that's exactly. That. All right. So, uh, one question. Sure. So, when you're looking at compute one, that, that first node, is it possible to break down uh, with the NL data has three virtuals running on it at that moment, and currently you're uh, banging the, uh, the CPU pretty hard? Can you, from one view, be able to see which one of those virtuals is uh, uh, run away? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's. That's the, that's the idea of uh, of uh, this unified view. You can you, you 
I can create another instance, and I will be able to see on the what compute node that instance is running, uh, and I will be able to see each one of them. So, like, if you had multiple, do you, can you get one graph that shows the CPU time as a percentage of the total CPU time mm -hmm. from from the host system? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it only depends on the way you configure the, the monitor. And it's, it's just a, this was a quick a little test that I wanted to, to run. But yeah. So you've given one, HP's uh, site? Site scope. Okay. So that's, at this point, that tool is a target for what you're, you're, you're talking about doing. I mean, when you said IT management tools, I thought, my God, there's thousands of those. What, what, what do you mean by that? <coughs> do you, you mean you specifically intend to target certain IT management? Um, For instance, yeah, you you can say that. I mean, in, in reality, <laughs> in reality, all I'm doing is learning OpenStack. Okay. Uh, 